Hello friends, in today's episode I'm going to take a closer look at a bunch of old printers. And what you see here are six different models, two of them are inkjet printers, but not ordinary ones, but especially for DIN A3 and even DIN A2 paper sizes. And then we have four laser printers from back in the day. Most of them were used in professional corporate environments. So these are not cheapos. And all of these are between 15 and 20 years old at this point. This video is of course made in 2017. So these printers are from the late 90s and early 2000s. And what you're going to see in this video is that I first tried to clean these things, then to get them running on Linux because I had some positive experience with that in the past. And then I'm going to refurbish an old computer and try to recreate the environment in which these printers would have been run back in the day. And I will then try to install old Windows operating systems. And in the end, I will then try to get these printers running on Windows 10, 32 and 64 bits as well. Okay, so let's start by taking a brief look at the individual printers that we have here. And the first model is a Hewlett Packard LaserJet 4000N, a black and white laser printer from around the year 1998. And as you can see, it is extremely dirty. We'll have to take care of that first. And on the back side, we can see a lot of connectors, but most importantly, a parallel connector and a network connector, both of which we'll try to use. The next model is another HP, this time LaserJet 4050N. Looks almost the same as the 4000, but it must have some slight differences. On the back side, we have the same connectors as with the 4000N. This is a Brother HL 5150D. And I think the newest of all the printers that we have here, it looks good in terms of the optical condition and it has as the only printer in this bunch already a USB connector. And here we have another Hewlett Packard, a LaserJet 3100. This is a combined laser printer, scanner and fax machine. And it has both a microcentronic connector and a fax machine connector on the back side. This printer here, which you might know from an earlier video that I made about a year ago is an HP DeskJet 1100C color inkjet printer for DIN A4 and up to DIN A3 paper size. And I have tried to get this running before, uh, but back in the day I really failed uh, to get correct color prints out of this and we'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. And the last in the bunch is this Canon bubble jet printer, that's just a trade name, BJC 5500 from the late 90s, early 2000s. And this is a color inkjet printer for paper of a size of up to DIN A2. And like the one we saw before, I also tried to get this printer running a year ago and totally failed at it. And that will hopefully change this time. So, but before going on with anything else, let's clean these really dirty Hewlett Packard printers. And well, I understand that some people find it maybe a little quirky or even make fun about me for cleaning everything so thoroughly all the time. And that's not because of some kind of OCD or something, but simply because I think that this belongs to the repair process. And I simply just enjoy getting something running again more if it also looks kind of new again. And also sometimes maybe you want to sell some of your stuff and cleaning it might be the easiest way to get a better price. So I'm just removing some of the dust and then using ordinary household detergent with some warm water to get off the superficial dirt. But then we unfortunately also have a bunch of stickers on the enclosure here. And well, I'm trying to remove them with the help of a sponge, for example but we are not really able to remove all of it and there are also these black marks all over the enclosure and with ordinary detergent there's just no way of getting this off. So what I'm trying here is to use some kind of solvent, in this case ordinary gasoline from the gas station and I take a rag and I try to use just a little teeny tiny bit of gasoline to wipe off the residual glue and the dirt from the enclosure. And as you can see here in this before and after comparison, that works actually quite well. And I can recommend that if you're careful with the amount of solvent that you use.
But before connecting the actual printers, let's take a brief look at the test setup. What we have here is an HP computer from around the year 2009-2010. It has an AMD Athlon 64X2 processor and 4 GB of DDR3 RAM at this point in time. And I would consider it still a reasonably modern PC. It was made for Windows 7 and will run Windows 10, even 64-bit later in the video and that runs without any problems. But it still has a parallel port, which is a good thing to have if you want to connect old printers. And the screen that I'm uh, using here is actually a TV. It might look a little decadent, but let me tell you, it's not even mine. It belongs to a friend and it also needs to be repaired. I simply connected it because I want to make 1080p screencasts here and I just happen to have no other 1080p screen in the workshop at the moment. So let's start with the 4000N then. And of the many connectors that we find on the back side, the parallel port is the one that is to be used to connect the printer directly to a computer. And that's what I've just done now. Next, I open this door here and we can see that there is still some old toner inside. Let's hope that this still works. And here we have a little sign telling us the date of manufacture of this printer. And well, after filling in some paper, let's turn it on. And we now can take a look inside the menu and I sift through it until I find what is here in German Informationsmenü, Information Menu and then Menü Struktur Drucken, Print Menu Structure. And here are our first two pages from this old printer here. Looking pretty good considering that this thing is 20 years old and has been sitting in some dusty basement for a couple of years. And inside the menu we can now look for the reset menu, Rücksetzmenü. And what we have here is Werkseinstellung wiederherstellen, that's restore factory settings or factory default. And I press enter for that as well. So here we are on Ubuntu, in this case version 17.04 and we just click on settings right here and then one single time on printers and add and after waiting a couple of seconds you then should see your printer in this list here. So in the list we find the serial port but we can just ignore that because nothing is connected to that. And then we have the HP LaserJet 4000 on LPT1, that's the parallel port. We press forward and now the system is already searching for drivers, that's good. And it asks us for an option if the duplexer is installed, let's ignore that for now. And we go on forward again, we're being asked for a name, we leave that at the default name, forward again. And now the installation of the printer is already pretty much finished and we're being asked if we want to print a test page and well of course we want to do that. So with a non-color printer this test page doesn't really tell you all that much. So let's just also print a text document and a picture. And both of those also came out quite well and I'm convinced that this laser printer is still working pretty much as it should. But there also is a second way to install a printer on Ubuntu and that is a program called CUPS. And for that you have to copy this link here, this URL, into your browser and then this window here will pop up and here we can also add and manage printers. So as you can see again the 4000 series uh, printer at the parallel port was found automatically and we can choose that. And again a name and description are given to us and we again leave that at the default value. And here CUPS shows us the detected model in a list of a whole variety of different printers and by choosing another model you would choose other preferences and other drivers and that is not necessary in this case but it can be necessary sometimes. Then some default options are shown to us um, concerning the paper size, the source of the paper and so on and again we leave that at the default values in this case. And that's already it, the printer is now installed and ready to use. 
However, there is one glitch that I encountered actually for several hours before finding a solution and that is that no matter which of the printers I connected to my parallel port, they just wouldn't appear in the list. Neither in the normal installation process nor here on CUPS. And after a lot of research I found out that there is a package that well, in some cases you just have to delete in order for printers on the parallel port to be detected. And that is called Lipsane HPAIO. And you have to type this here into the terminal to uh, remove that package. And after that, at least in my case, it worked out. So connecting this 20 year old printer and getting it running again on Ubuntu was no problem at all. The drivers were just pre-installed and were found immediately. And you also can use even this old printer as a wireless network uh, printer if you have a router like this Fritz box here. And how that works? Well, I'm going to show you that in the example of the 4050N in just a minute. So. Here is the 4050N, very similar to the 4000N. The installation process was exactly the same. The driver for the 4050N was also found immediately and that worked with no problems. So let's do some test prints. And we can see that unfortunately there are some dirty horizontal lines in it seems equidistant uh, distances on the paper. I would think that this is probably just a cleaning issue and so has something to do with the drum inside the laser printer itself. And well, I will have to do some research on that and re maybe repair that later. But if one of you guys knows what the problem is with this printer, then let me know it in the comment section. But how can you use an old network printer like this one as a wireless printer? Well, you can just connect your printer via a network cable to a wireless router like this Fritz box here. Just a very common type of router in Germany. Then you just open your browser and in this case type in fritz.box and enter the Fritz box. And there you can see that the printer is now connected to this router. And in Ubuntu you can then just go through the printer installation process and just very easily install it as a network printer and there you go it's now available as a Wi-Fi printer. But what if your computer doesn't have a parallel port and your printer is not a network printer? Well then you might need one of these an adapter for USB to parallel you can get these for under 10 bucks on Amazon for example but I have to be honest I did not get my printers running with one of these at least not for this video I might talk about this in the future though. Okay, so let's get on then with the next printer, the Brother HL5150D. And as I said before, it's the only one with a USB connector. So let's connect it via USB. And well, as you can see here, I didn't even have to go through the installation process manually. It was installed automatically after plugging in the USB cable. So the drivers are here and this works like a charm. I then also tried it with the parallel cable and well in this case I again have to go through the installation process manually but here as well the model is detected and the correct driver is installed. Let's do some test prints again. Text and a picture and all looks very good. And there is another interesting option here if your printer has a USB port but is not a network printer. You can still connect it via USB to a Fritz box. It has here a USB port for that. And then you can go again on the Fritz box itself. And there you can see that it is connected as a USB device and it can now be installed as a wireless network printer on Ubuntu. And for that you go through the installation process. You go then on find network printer and at least if you're using a Fritz box, you type in fritz.box and port 9100 and go on forward. And now the network printer should be found. But this time you actually have to choose the right model from a list of printers as I'm doing here. And I'm scrolling through these hundreds or thousands of different models and I'm finding the Brother HL5150D and I accept that choice. And now I can use the Brother printer without the need for an actual cable connection between the computer and the printer. 
Okay, so let's get on then to the next printer, the HP 1100C. And that's the A3 inkjet printer that I worked on about a year ago or so. And back then I only managed to, well, have black and white printouts. But as soon as I wanted to print out color, it didn't really work, even though I had replacement cartridges. But the problem back then was that I had used replacement cartridges that were too old, or so it seems. And I have now bought new third-party replacement cartridges and inserted them in the printer. So let's see if there will be any improvement. And again, as expected, the installation process went without any problems. The driver was found and the printer installed within a minute or so. So let's print a test page. And now let's try an A3 color printout. And as you can see, a major improvement. Well, I give it to you that it's a little darker than we see on the screen. But I think if at all, it's a problem of the ink and not really of the printer or of the drivers. So let's get on then with the next printer, the Canon BJC 5500 that I also worked on in my video from about a year ago. And back then I made a similar mistake uh, with this printer as well. What I did is I bought replacement cartridges, but the problem was actually the print head that was, I don't know, burned through or something. It didn't work at all. So now I ordered a new print head that also came with new cartridges. Well, new, they are probably years old, but they were still in the original packaging and sealed. And I now installed them into this printer and let's print a test page. And the installation process of even this rather rare printer seemed to go without any problems. But there still seem to be some issues. Next I tried to print a colored picture on a DIN A3 paper, but the colors were kind of negative and also wrong in other ways. I first thought it was the printer itself, but I got this running on Windows XP just fine. And talking about Windows XP, let's briefly talk about the last printer, the LaserJet 3100. If you just turn it on, it just shows a blank screen and the two LEDs are lighting up. And you can do nothing whatsoever by pushing the buttons. Now I found out that if you pull out the power cord, put it in again and push the right combination of buttons, it goes into a kind of firmware mode. So I think in order to get this running again, I need the original firmware updater, which only exists for very old Windows operating systems. And that is why I actually set up an old PC try to install old Windows operating systems on that and then also tried Windows 10 and those are things that I already did but that I cannot show in this episode but will do so in the next episode that I guess I will finish in the next couple of days and will upload then. So at this point I can only say that Ubuntu is really great in terms of availability of drivers and I'm amazed that all these really old printers could be installed so quickly. But there also have been some examples of glitches and bugs. Like for example that Libsane package that I had to delete before I could even use printers on the parallel port. And then also it seems the faulty driver for the Canon BJC 5500. But all in all I really recommend uh, to learn more about Linux get an older PC, install it on there and try to get your old printers running again with that. It's really a lot of fun if it works.